Hey guys, this is Jason. I um, got a piece here by Brett Booth. Um, this is not a high def. This is something I found online. It, it's uh, it, It'll suffice for what we need though. It is sharp enough. Um, just simply took a JPEG. You can still see his original page. It looks like it's from uh, X Men Seventeen. I don't. I'm not even really sure. But uh, this is this is uh, one of Brett Booth's pieces. One of the things I love about his pieces is just how dynamic he is with his line work, um, <clears throat> and that's something you definitely don't want to try and lose. Uh, this will not be a full vi video. I am not going to post, you know, eight hours of working on a single page. But uh, we're going to work on some pieces of it. Um, try and get through some different aspects of it. Uh, I'm gonna try something a little bit new here. Uh, I'm using some, uh, the Koenor uh, Ultra Draw. Uh, usually I use the uh, Dr. Martin's Black Star. Love this stuff. Um, it's got a great texture. I'm starting to run a little low on it and it's hard to find this in the larger bottles that I used to be able to find. I have been searching for these online for a bit, but I can't find them anywhere. So I'm um, going to try switching over to this because I use it in my uh, repeatographs. And also because I, I see a lot of people recommend it. So we're going to give it a try. I know that I can buy it in larger bottles if I like it a bit. So uh, we're going to do that. I like to use one of these little like um, watercolor paint palettes because I can make put just a few drops in and not ever worry about dipping my brush or my pen in too deep. <clears throat> and I don't make as much of a mess with it. Um, we're gonna be using a uh, Hunt 102 nib. This is a, a Japanese holder, just because uh, the, the Hunt 102 nib is not super comfortable to me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Mm. Just so you know, I've had a bit of bronchitis recently and I've, uh, I'm getting over it, I got my antibiotics and everything, but uh, there is definitely a little bit of a residual cough. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the 102 nib and what we're gonna be doing with it. Um, the 102 nib is a, uh, it's made by Speedball. Uh, it is a semi-flexible nib with a, a lot of variety in line to it. Um, it really only kind of paints, or uh, I shouldn't say paint, it only marks, uh, puts down a line in one direction. Uh, so you kind of have to pull at that. Now I've actually found that you can do a very light line the other direction, but you got to be very, very delicate with it. Um, I am starting cold. I have not warmed up, so uh, I probably want to start with some um, minor light things kind of around the borders or maybe some edges here that I can put some shapes in. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you can see it just off to the side here. I have a piece of scrap paper. Um, I also have uh, a, a smaller copy of the actual pencils, just uh, in a darker format. That way, once I start putting lines down here, if I get lost on something or something doesn't feel as easy to see, I can refer back to the pencils and see what he was originally doing. Um, I, I used to not do that, and I would find mistakes in my work that I really didn't like. So, um, so eh, that's, that's a great way of doing it. Um, all right, I got my ink. We're gonna go in. I never really dip past the the holes in the ink. Um, I always keep a piece of old t-shirt around uh, for wiping the edge of the blade. And we're gonna start here in some of this kind of, uh, I guess, portal, whatever it is. sculpting my line. I'll find that I am putting down a line. Sometimes I'll put a line right next to it or even kind of decide that the shape needs to change on it. So then I lay a little extra down next to it. Build it out.
And I got these lines in here. I'm going to build them up some. One of the keys to using a 102 also is sharp, fast. Pull your lines fast. Um, you need a lot of people flick, some people pull. Flicking is most common. Um, but the faster you pull your line, the less you are going to dig in or pull on the paper. And the less you are going to get wobble to your line. Plus, it gives you energy, you know? I don't say you energy. I mean, it gives the image Im energy. It, it, it's really easy to make something look stiff if you're just tracing, you know, outlining. Um, and since you have to sculpt lines, it's real easy to get into the mentality of, oh, I've got to sculpt along this line. I've got to sculpt along that line. But truthfully, what you're doing is drawing with ink with a roadmap under you. I don't know if you noticed, but what I did there was I drew a line out here. I drew another line out here at the bottom and kind of filled my little square, rectangular, angular shape in. And that is how I built my line and sculpted it. It looks like you just kind of did a wobbly line with a lot of energy and effort. But really, what you did was very thoughtfully put down a lot. So something you'll notice also with the crow quill is because it's sharp and paper is soft as it gets wet, it's real easy for it to pick up little bits of pulp. There's two ways to avoid this, really. One, you're not going to avoid it. Two, don't press into the paper so hard. Um, you can really make a, a pretty decent and thick line by just building your line. As opposed to pressing into the paper. But every so often, no matter what you do, you're gonna have to wipe the brush down. Uh, I've seen a couple guys use different things for this. Uh, I know Jimmy Reyes likes to tout uh, denim, and that's cool. Denim works. Um, I, I, it's tough, um, and it definitely will do the trick. I tend to find that I get less fibers and hairs on my nib if I'm using a soft, like, jersey knit T-shirt. I just 
just have one that I cut up. Mine's an old ACDC t-shirt. Uh, don't judge my musical tastes. I'm old. I've been using crow quills since I was a kid, and the reason I could use a crow quill as a kid is you could find calligraphy supplies at the local art store. There was no, and they had watercolor brushes, man, you had the cheap, you know, bottom of the rung Michaels store brand. And I didn't really have a way of getting a hold of something like a, a nice Windsor Newton or a Raphael. So, you know, I didn't learn brushes easily because I didn't have what I thought were professional supplies for that. But, Speedball 102 Crow Quill, well, you could find those. So I practice. Unfortunately, I also didn't have a whole lot of access to comic books, boards, and uh, to... Um, actual artwork that I could use that was, you know, of the right quality. Um, so I did a lot of my own and I did a lot of it on sketchbook paper and it wasn't that great. Uh, I think one of my earliest, and I'll pull it out for a video someday, uh, one of my earliest was a uh, video of, oh, sorry, or one of my earliest was a study of... Um, Brian Boland's uh, Killing Joke cover, um, which you know, I'm sure a million of us have studied because it's just a masterwork. But I did it on sketchbook paper with a 102, and I didn't really know much about line weight at the time, so it's got some very flat line weights, but I am pretty proud of it still. It's still a uh, one of my most successful pieces in terms of looking to study a piece and make it as close to what the original artist did. You know, and I was like 13, you know, I'm working on notebook paper and sketch paper and kind of enjoying doing this little section down here because I got a lot of texture. kind of one of the things I like most about Brett Booth's work is I have so many textures and line weight vari variations and, and so on. Makes it fun, dynamic. All right, so I think that's going to be it for what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm going to keep going and post some more videos kind of based on what I get to and where I'm going. Um, but uh, thanks for tuning in. If you like what you're seeing here and uh, you want to do or see more, um, absolutely feel free and please do uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'm planning on doing a lot more of these. I know my first one was not the best video because it was a process video of, from me doing a Procreate thing and it cut off like half of it. So I'm going to try and keep this one going and seeing if I can't get you guys uh, a little bit more access to something that, that feels uh, a little more like a guy who's actually trying to learn how to ink. All right, see you next time.